So recently there was a community topic that came out on LinkedIn called how can you ensure sales operations are scalable, which for me, I wrote an ebook about this. I've written checklists, I've written guides. I have a model for this called the scalable sales success iceberg. And the iceberg model is generally overplayed, but it works so well in this case. And so I had to contribute to this community article. And what I want to do in this video is I want to go through it and provide some insights, both what other people said in the community and their responses to some parts of it, as well as what I put in there, my thoughts. Now, if you're not familiar with the way that these articles work, these community articles is there's a topic and the way it works on LinkedIn now is that it's a topic that was generated by AI, it even says powered by AI in the LinkedIn community. AI comes up with a topic, comes up with a certain number of sub bullet points. In this case, there's six sub bullet points, six kind of like topic portions to uh, reflect on or respond to in relation to the main topic. And then it's open to the community to respond. And obviously there's top contributors who are part of it. And that's where I found this. So in this article, if you will. It's a community topic, really. How can you ensure sales operations are scalable? The six categories, subtopics in here are define your sales processes, use the right technology, align your sales strategy, optimize your sales resources, adapt to change, and here's what else to consider. They always put that at the end just as a catch-all for anyone else that has something else to contribute. All right, let's begin with subtopic number one, defining your sales process. And this is where I jumped in with my feedback as a contributor to this article. Here's the biggest thing. So many sales operations are run by one of two people that I see. One is a owner, founder, creator of the product, seller of the thing, right? They are the technician that created it. If we go by the uh, Emith revisited Michael Gerber model of managers, visionaries, and technicians. They are the technician who created this product or founded this company. They were the chief sales person because it was their baby. They created it. And so they were the ones that were out there. They were selling it and got it to a certain point. That person then creates a sales team or has a need to replicate themselves or leverage their time or get away from having to sell because they're doing everything else to run the company. And then they're trying to grow that. And they think if I just hire the right people and throw them out there, they're going to do what they do best, which is a huge mistake. And in fact, I wrote an ebook about this where part of that ebook talks about hiring people in that way and how that's such a big issue. The other type of person who ends up in a sales operation, sales leadership role is somebody who was really good in sales. They were effective. They were promoted because they were so good or they were promoted because they were consistent because they showed up. Maybe they were a rock star. Maybe they were just like consistent. They were effective. And so now they're in a leadership role. And so they try to make everyone do what they did to be successful, or they think that everyone will, should just do what they did or follow their playbook because that's what they did to succeed. And so that's the way to do it. Now, that is a problem because everybody is different. There are a lot of different personalities, different types, different work styles, different game player types, different motivational reasons. There's so many different things that go into it that you can't just treat everyone and think that they're going to do what you did, right? Now, in my response here about defining your sales process, it's the number one thing that you have to do. The biggest thing is, is that you can't just assume that you can hire some salespeople, give them some leads or a list or some contacts, and then hope that they know what to do and they will just show up and close deals. It's not how that works. And here's the biggest piece of advice is if you try to do that and you find someone that's so amazing and so effective and so self-motivated and so good at what they do, that they can succeed in sales without you, they're not gonna stay forever. At some point, they're gonna take their ball and they're gonna go somewhere else for somebody who's gonna pay them more or they're just gonna start their own company because they realize, I'm so amazing, I don't need you, I can do better on my own, why would I wanna stay here, right? That is what will happen. They are not going to stay forever unless you've made it just so easy and so lucrative where you're paying them so much money that it's just simple and it's a no brainer for them. And so the key is, is that you, you have to stop assuming that you can just hire the right person, put them in the seat and that should work enough. You have to define your sales process. And keep in mind, it's not about defining your sales process of what you did, but it's also a combination of what you did and what works and what other people can do. It's one of the things I advise people all the time is what is the sales process that a 
normal, good salesperson human can do. Not you because you're superhuman. If you're a rock star sales rep, stop thinking everyone's going to be a rock star like you and build a sales process that a well-intended salesperson who is a cultural fit for your company, who wants to do well, can take your sales process and produce above average results right? An amazing salesperson is going to turn it into amazing, but you want to bring someone who's average in, give them a process where they can get above average results. If you do that, you're winning. You've built a scalable process because then you don't need to hire superstars. You don't need to only have a certain type of person who's amazing. And instead, what you're doing is building more of a sales factory. You bring someone in, give them the tools and the process and the systems in place where they can produce much better results, something above average average, something better than what they could just do on their own. You've helped them achieve more. If you can do that and you can fill your sales team with that, trust me, you are winning.